Uh, he will be talking about quantum machine learning. Uh, Parfait is an innovator at the intersection of quantum computing and urban development. He's affiliated with the MIT Media Lab and La Salle Universidad Roman Lyrou. I'm not probably not saying it correctly, to pioneer urban modeling and future mobility solutions for sustainability. His data science and AI role at the University of Barcelona reflects his dedication to advancing innovation. Welcome. Um, when I think about quantum computing, uh, I think of large computers, basically computers the size of that we once that we had in the 60s. Is that correct, or am I mistaken? Good, good, good morning. Good morning. Um, have you seen my 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 screen before before answering the, the question? Because I did it. Yes, can. Yeah, we can we can share. We see your screen. Do you see it? Yeah, we see our we see your screen. Perfect. So, um, about the question, uh, what do you you were saying? Yes, we can see we can see quantum computing um, by uh, by that way, like uh, a very powerful uh, machine, probabilistic machine that can empower a classical uh, computation, not the whole classical computation but part of this computation. So we can see it like uh, you, de uh, you, you define it. I, I, think it's, I think my question was not completely uh, well formulated. So the question I had was like, if I think about uh, quantum computers, I think about the size of these computers uh, matching the size of the old computers in the 60s, which are basically the size of a uh, gym. Um, is okay. that correct, or am I mistaken? And it's correct for the moment where we are now, because uh, uh, let us say that uh, quantum computers. Uh, now we are we are still in the laboratory. We are solving a lot of things, but we didn't have a quantum computer like a personal computer as uh, we have to, uh, today. So uh, the quantum computer that we have now are like uh, the biggest com uh, quantum computer, the biggest machine like uh, you, you just described. Because also the way to access to uh, this com uh, these computers also is uh, by living in, in cloud computing. So uh, what you are saying, yes, makes sense. But maybe in the close future, we can see another things on that. Um, so you pre you've prepared a keynote on quantum computing, so the floor is yours. Thanks. And ca can you see my, uh, my, my screen? Perfect. So um, before talking about the quantum machine learning as I prefer, I prefer is uh, it could be very interesting to talk about uh, the limitation. What push us to the quantum uh, uh, to the quantum uh, computing uh, 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 size? So first is that uh, uh, the classical computation has limitation about uh, about the technology, the hardware limitation. So uh, to improve the the power uh, of uh, this uh, this computation. We need to reduce the, the size of the transistor by reducing the size of the transistors. We are no longer working um, in the classical domain. We are working in the quantum domain. This is one thing. The second thing is about uh, the energy efficiency. So the quantum computer to leverage the quantum advantage only consume the energy compared to the two washing machines to do that instead of huge energy. Another thing that is very interesting also to, to share here is that, that quantum com uh, computers are quantum, quantum computing operate with complex mathematical uh, uh, model. That means uh, we don't need to, to make approximation by dealing with discrete a domain, like a binary 1010. We can go directly to the, to the continuous domain and map them. 
and this is very important. Also, we can use also these complex mathematical uh, tools to leverage and to improve uh, the security of and the scriptation of the internet, because we know that everything that we have uh, uh, today is based on, on internet, even if this uh, talk that we are, we are, we are having to, uh, today. So we can use these complex mathematical tools to uh, uh, to uh, redefine the, the internet and to protect the, the, the encryption. But before understand a little bit about the quantum machine learning, let us let us uh, let us focus in this graph um, in this slide where we we are trying to compare the classical computation with the quantum computation only to have a very very clear view. So the classical uh, computation is the computation that are sequential, and I I have to be in the same state at, uh, at at the same time. So if I have one qubit, one bit, I have the possibility to be in the state one or negative zero. But at the same time, I cannot be in the same state at the same time. So if I have more combination, only I have to be in one combination at the same time. But in quantum we have the possibility to be in all these states at the same time. And the difference is according to some probability that we will have to recover the information. So here, the key, the key uh, information is how can I return the information uh, that um, for me is accurate that I'm looking for. We can give some kind of example like a, a maze or labyrinth where classically, if we want to find uh, the out outcome, the thing that we have to do is go sequentially. I go, I come back, go, I come back, go, I come back. At the end, I find the outcome or output. In the quantum leap, I can go all in the same time and return only with, with the probability of the output. This is very powerful. And we are not talking about the another uh, characteristic like an entanglement. Okay, so now in this talk, we, we want to talk about uh, quantum uh, machine learning. Okay, so, but before talking about quantum machine learning, the first thing that we need to, um, we need to, to, to understand, uh, let us rec uh, recover the, the, um, the definition of uh, um, machine learning that we know that is the subset of the AI, as we are talking here, that have uh, three uh, big area that is supervised, unsupervised, and reinforcement learning. But without uh, 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 wanting to dive deeply, we know that by supervised learning, we have some kind of uh, but that is a classification that we can make like a, some kind of thing like a customer retention. We can make it like a facial recognition or bank for detection or regression where we can make the prediction with a price model or the credit risk assessment or on the supervised, on supervised learning where we can make some kind of uh, marketing uh, stuff like a customer segmentation and so on. But the thing that I want to recover here in machine learning is that we didn't have machine learning if we don't have data. Without data, there's no paradise, there's no machine learning. So it's very important to understand this. And so how can we, can we leverage on this by using quantum computing to improve machine learning? There's a several strategy. In this talk, I will leverage only in one, one of them. There's a strategy about the data that is like, instead of using the whole universe of the data that we have in the company or the society, we can use some, some tiny set of the data. And with this tiny set of the data, we can map from this discrete space to the continuous space to recover all the information, the hiding information or hiding parameters that we have. We can use to make also optimization, so find the best. Uh, uh, solution because in, in quantum and uh, in the optimization problem or combinatorial problem in the society or in the company are problems that are very present and everything that we are doing and and also they, they are problems that are very hard to be solved with a classical computation. So quantum computation can help us in that way. And in the model, uh, in the in the strategy of a model is how can we design better models by living in quantum computer 
and also how can we use machine learning for quantum experiment. One, the, one of the strategies that I, 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 I want to leverage here is not about understanding how to make a code, but it's only to help us to focus, to understand this strategy, is here in the one hand, uh, in the left hand, we have a code, and is a, is a typical machine learning code, supervised machine learning code, right by Tosh, where we have the data, we can see the data, we can see the model here, we can see the cost function and the training set. The same code, we have it in the right hand, but solved in quantum computing. So we can see that we have the same code, and the difference only in this strategy is let us change the model. So quantum machine learning in this strategy, we, we are saying if we have the ability or the capability that we can improve the model by leverage in quantum stuff, we can improve uh, quantum machine learning. This is one of uh, a strategy. But what means this? What is the fundament of the quantum mach uh, or the machine learning? We know that we can split machine learning in three biggest blocks, the data blocks, the model, and the cost function. And in the case of that, the data as linear separately that we know we can use some kind of linear, linear uh, model. So it's like, let us find a quantum model that can help us to separate this data. In the case that the model or the data is very, very complicated, we can use quantum computers like a kind of smart uh, domain, like a kernel function, where we can map these problems into the high dimension of the quantum computer to make it easier and find a good model, the correct model, to solve these problems. Even if, if we want to make deep learning, as we know, we can use the same philosophy by leveraging or changing part of this uh, model or putting some kind of layer in this model uh, dealing with data or dealing with voices and so on. With all this, which blocks has quantum machine learning? Quantum machine learning can be summarized in three biggest blocks. The encoding, we will see, we will see why we need this block, and the model where we make the process and the, and the measurement. The encoding blocks, we call it a feature map sometimes because we need to embed the data, the data in, in, into, into quantum computers because the quantum computers doesn't know how to solve, how to deal with classical data. The quantum computer only solves quantum data, but in the society and the company, what we have is a lot of uh, classical data. So how can we do that? We need to embed this data into the quantum quantum uh, computer. So the way to do that is use the uh, uh, quantum embed embedding techniques. So here, there's a lot of zone or techniques that we can use to make this uh, embedding data. And after embedding this data, we can choose the model that we want and leverage in the quantum, we can do like all we can see here, like super vector machine, like uh, the convolutional network, we can make like a classical deep learning, leverage on quantum model and so on. So it's like, let us focus in the model and see how can we change the model? How can we design like a, like a model based on quantum capability that can empower uh, our machine learning? So if we already have this, we have to wait to have the quantum uh, matching before doing all this. No, the answer is no, because we can use this specialized uh, hardware to do it. We can use CPUs because with the, with the our our CPU, the normal CPU, we can simulate uh, uh, quantum quantum systems and uh, quantum machine learning. But in this case, we need a lot a lot of RAM memory, and we can use the GPUs and so on by waiting for the. Uh, accurate uh, uh, quantum quantum hardware. So at the end of the day, what I want to say that a quantum computers can be trained like a neural network. Quantum computer can be used by dealing all these problems that we can see in the society on a company like uh, hyperparameters problems and all this by the same way that we are doing with classical, but leveraging in some high dimension space by leading with the cost function and all these parameters also. We can do deep learning by leverage on some classical uh, a neural, a neural uh, a network, on also on quantum uh, neural network, or we can combine 
uh, uh, part of the quantum quantum uh, uh, quantum processor unit with GPUs and also CPUs. So all this complex or hybrid uh, stuff we can be uh, can be done by using quantum computers now. But this is not cheap because we have some limitation on uh, quantum computing because as uh, as you said, uh, now the quantum computers, we are, we are still uh, making a, a research about them, which is the very good, uh, accurate architecture that can help us to make all these, uh, uh, all these uh, stuff. We need more numbers of qubits, but we didn't need a lot, a lot of number of qubits, but we need the accurate number of qubits. Why I'm saying this? Because only with 300 qubits, 300 qubits, we can make a lot of combination than the star in the universe with quantum computers. So we can have all this possibility by finding the good, um, the good state by returning the probability of this good state. So the, the the algorithm that we can use can help us to deal with the complex problem. So it's not about a lot of qubit; it's about the quality of the qubit. And the one of one of the biggest problems that we have in quantum computing you know, is the, that the lack of, lack of, lack of talented people to deal with that. So some examples to to focus to show us is about. The typical problem that we were talking, uh, uh, we were talking, and we, we are going to talk during all these days about the classification problems, about the regression problems, about the segmentation problem. All these problems we can solve them with quantum computer, and we can also improve, improve or speed out some part of classical uh, method. Here we can see that we can make some kind of. Uh, um, um, Process, uh, uh, a signal process. We can use these these techniques by resampling data. So from some very subset of data, we can have like a, a generalized part of a, of of these data in the in the linear domain. And with this, we can attack drug discovery. And we can attack a lot of problems in the in in, in, the, in the in the industry. In this, in this, in this, uh, in this solution, this is the real, real solution. Uh, uh, doing with Boeing, that is an airplane uh, here that we leverage also in um, uh, Amazon uh, work uh, bracket uh, tech, uh, technique. We we deal with quantum machine learning in hyperparameter search, and here we improve the classical ma uh, machine learning um, by. Finding the hyperparameters in very short time than, than this, uh, this, uh, this, this technique, only by using the strategy of uh, um, working in the very short uh, uh, um, and that, uh, data data universe. Here we we uh, we save like 80 percent of the time, representing by this graph that we hear in the green, we have the classical total time, and, and here we have the the quantum time that we we have we have deal with this. In these examples uh, done with um, uh, uh, Amazon and also leverage in the in the IBM and the Ablano Cloud Cloud, we convert the Raspberry Pi and uh, into the quantum quantum uh, hardware where we can solve uh, the picking in batching problems. That is very interesting. Uh, problems in 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 this uh, internet world that we are uh, going and here we 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 speed up uh, we speed up uh, a lot of uh, a lot of classical uh, classical problem by dealing with this uh, this pro uh, pro uh, project also and uh, here this is the pro problem that we can see and every 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 uh, company that is talking about their routing and the scheduling problems so here we can see in this graph we can see the native tcp tcp is the travel assessment problem that is very uh, a problem that is very costly to solve with uh, with a, a classical computation because it is the problem this problem is uh, uh, is uh, is grow up like a factorial so is is a np hard problem with with quantum computer uh, computer and the algorithm that we we have solved this is GP, uh, GPS that we can solve we can see how we speed out these problems and uh, and uh, and we solve it with uh, the quantum compu uh, computation and also uh, the the last the last um, example that I wanted to share with you about the machine learning quantum machine learning in the decision field it is is called a quantum case based reasoning in these problems what we 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 have done here is let us think. 
like a, a human does uh, by solving a new problem. So given a new problem, how we do to solve this problem? We go to the, our memory, uh, our, our case memory, we find the solution that we already have by solving problem similarity problem with this, and we try to lever on that. So we come to computers and we graph-based systems. We try to interpret the statement of the problem as input, and the sol the solution as the output. And this we uh, we offer and we propose some kind of algorithm that can help us to solve these problems. So till this uh, is a uh, is a. Uh, the presentation of, uh, of this talk about how uh, we can use quantum computing by leverage quantum machine learning. And if you, there's uh, any question, I will be glad uh, for answering. Thank you uh, for your keynote. I do have a question. Now, I'm an owner of a mid-sized company and I want uh, to use quantum computing in my business operations or in my IT department. How do I get access to a quantum computing uh, power? Um, two, two ways to do that. If your company is working and dealing with uh, all these uh, stuff that we are talking that machine learning can be helpful, the first thing uh, you, can, you can do is uh, find uh, leverage on this uh, framework and see how can we speed out this, this stuff. So optimization problems, all these optimization problems, combinatorial problems, one computer can help you a lot on that because these problems are very hard to be solved with a, a classical computation. This is first. And how can you start? How can you get involved on that? There's a lot of company that here I have, I have a, these are a lot of companies that are leading this, like Google, Microsoft, and that they are already have the pipeline in, in, in their systems. Here we can see we can see the 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 the, the software as a service that they already have, like a platform as a service. So IBM already have this. If I know what I want to do and I want to send it uh, to the cloud, I can already use IBM today, and the, the price is about the execution that you have. You have the same for Amazon, you have the same for Asia, and you have the same also for Google. So if you have the capability to understand the problem that you have, and you are solving in, uh, in classical, you can use the framework to improve this problem, and also you can use like uh, some kind of software as a service platform, like IBM, Amazon, and so on, to to, uh, to use this uh, computation and uh, come out with the outcome. Guys, any last question or do we set quick to the next speaker? I have really just a, sh a short question because the way I understand quantum computing is that the way we encrypt our data nowadays when we when it's in transition HTTPS is based on asymmetric encryption that's based on prime factorization uh, if I'm if I'm informed correctly so with quantum computing th th does it mean that banking is not secure anymore or do you have any algorithms um, already at hand that will solve it or that will encrypt uh, reliably with quantum computers Very good question. Um, the thing here to understand is uh, um, the, the security of internet is based on RSA code. So it's based on a pan factors, as you yeah. are saying. So making a multiplication is very easy for the classical uh, classical computation. So factoring numbers is very very hard for the quantum uh, for the classical computation. But for the quantum comp computation, uh, since uh, 1994, we have an algorithm that can factor the prime numbers. Since 1994, and here at MIT by Peter Shaw, we already have this. So we can factor prime numbers, and uh, in the eight hours, when we need four thousand years of CPUs to do it in classical in classical uh, in classical com uh, com uh, computation. So that means we had a waste in the internet. We had a waste on all this, but. This also, we can see it in another point of view that with this capability that we have with quantum computer, we can redesign another kind of uh, secure internet. So 
now we, we, they are working, a lot of groups are working to redefine the security of the internet by using quantum internet. And this is very, very also, also amazing. Quantum computer can be used this powerful to make the factorization very quickly, exponentially than the classical uh, computation, because we have this, uh, this, uh, this capability instead of doing sequentially each things, you can do it all at the same time. This is what uh, this algorithm does. Yeah. Thank you, Parfait. We're unfortunately running out of time. I would love to continue the discussion. Uh, thank you so much for your keynote. And uh, we're off to our next speaker. Thanks again, Parfait.